Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Life Science with Nivedita. So this is KZ Life Science 2023 most important topics discussion series. So I already made a playlist of this video series. I provide link in the description. Kindly check it out. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about one of the most important topic that is restriction enzymes and its types. Okay, so now without any further delay, let's get started. First of all, what is the thing about this restriction enzyme? What are restriction enzymes? Okay, so these restriction enzymes were also called as molecular scissors. So usually scissors are thing about what which we use to cut something, right? So here it is called as a molecular scissors because it has the capacity to cleave DNA at a near specific recognition sequence. So as you can see the test tube DNA is there. Okay, so this restriction enzymes cuts the DNA into gene-sized pieces. So just act like a scissor, okay? So usually scissors we used to cut for something, but here this restriction enzyme will, you know, helps to cut a, a DNA at a specific site, okay? So you can see all this happens in a test tube. In a test tube, DNA is there. So in that DNA itself, we added restriction enzymes. Then only it has the capacity to cleave or cut a DNA at a specific sequences, okay? So one incision on each each of two strands of DNA, that is restriction endonucleases. For example, here DNA strand is there. Okay, so here restriction enzyme will act. So when this restriction enzyme will like what happened, two different strands will create it. Okay, so that is done by the enzyme restriction endonucleases. So this restriction enzyme, uh, restriction enzyme term is originated by while studying on the sage bacteria. Okay, so in the bacteriophage study, this restriction enzyme term will originate it. So usually, uh, you know, bacteriophage means what? The virus which will infect the bacteria. So that is phenomenon of host control restriction. Okay, so while studying about the bacteriophage, this term restriction enzyme will originate it. Okay. So here, the nomenclature. So how the just similar like names. We have something names, right? Like... Uh, name. So here, these restriction enzymes are named based on the bacteria, which they are isolated in the following manner. So usually I have a name that is, uh, my name is Nivedita. Like that, you people have different names, right? So here also, these restriction enzymes have a specific name. So that name, that nomenclature is coming from a following manner. For example, here one restriction enzyme is said that is ECO-R1. So how this name will come? So here, E represents a genus, the bacteria. For example, E. coli means what? That is Hysterichia coli. Okay. So the first letter, that is E, represents the genus, then CO. So from the uh, from CO, they uh, took the CO, that is coli, that is species. Then R. So R is usually the strain, RY13 strain. From this RY13 strain, they took this R. So next I, this is not I, that is eco R1. Okay, so this one, this number will represent, uh, you know, order identified in bacteria. So this eco R1 is the first identified, that's why it named as a 1. Okay, so based on this, they named this, you know, restriction enzymes. That is, the first letter is genus, then species, then strain, at last, the order of identification. Okay, just similar like eco R1, some other. Uh, restriction enzymes are there like uh, HIND3, TAC1, BAM H1. Okay, so like these different types of restriction enzymes are there. So they named based on the following manner. Okay, so next types of restriction enzymes. So usually two types of restriction enzymes are there. One is exonuclease, another one is endonuclease. Okay, so exo endo. So what is the difference between these two? Endo means what? Which will cleave in between, that is in the middle. Okay. So exo means what? That is, you can say outside or at the ending. Okay. So catalyzes hydrolysis of terminal nucleotides from the end of DNA or RNA. So here what? The terminal cleavage takes place. You can see this is a DNA strands. Okay. So when exonuclease enzyme will come and act, it will cleave at the end, not in the middle. Okay, so those type of, uh, you know, enzymes we call as a exonucleases and one more is that is endonucleases which will recognize the specific base sequence in middle. You can see DNA sequence is there. So when endonuclease will act, which will cleave in a 
middle not at the end not in the terminal in a specific base sequence in the middle of the sequence it will cleave okay you can see restriction endonuclease which will cleave at a specific sequences that is in the middle not at the terminal okay so next So in the restriction endonuclease, when it act on the DNA sequence, it will create two types of ends. Okay, so one is that is a sticky end, another one is a blunt end. You can see this is a DNA strand. You can say this is a recognition site. So where restriction first restriction enzyme has recognized the site, then only it has cleave. Okay, so here this is a restriction site. Okay, so once it is recognized, what happened? It has to cleave in a specific sequences, right? So when it is cleave in this manner, okay, some sort of uh, you know ends are created. We can say this is a complementary overhangs. So these type of complementary overhangs is uh, created. No, so this type of ends we call as a sticky ends. So similar like this. Sticky, not smooth. Okay. Yeah, these type of ends are created when uh, you know restriction endonucleases are act on a recognition site. So these type of uh, you know ends are called as a sticky ends. And one more end is created that is blunt end. You can see this is a recognition site. So when restriction enzymes or restriction endonuclease will act on a specific site, which will create a ends. We can call this type of ends are called as a blunt ends. You can say it's a smooth ends. There is no sticky in the ends. So these sticky ends will create overhangs and these blunt ends will create no overhangs. There is a uniform edges will created when blunt end is created. There is a non-uniform ends are created when the sticky ends, I know, uh, restriction endonucleus will act. Okay, so these are the two types of ends are created when restriction endonuclease will act. So now uh, there are many types of restriction endonucleases are there. There are generally four types of restriction endonucleases are there. That is type 1, type 2, type 3 and also type 4. Okay, so here four types of restriction endonucleases are there. So now we discuss one by one because... Uh, these four different restriction enzymes have different functions, different cofactors. Okay, so in detail we discuss now. Okay, okay. you can see there are four types of uh, restriction enzymes are there. So here type one, type two, then type three, and also type four. So four different uh, restriction endonucleases have different functions, different cofactors. Okay, so one by one we discuss now. So first one that is type one restriction enzymes. Okay, so this type one restriction enzymes has three cofactors that is ATP, S arenosyl methionine, and also magnesium. Okay, so when come to the type one restriction enzymes. Three different cofactors are there. One is ATP. Another one is, we can say this also SAM, that is S adenosyl methionine and also magnesium. When come to the type 1 restriction enzymes, three different cofactors are there. And when come to the this uh, cleavage site, cleave at sites away from the recognition site. So this type 1 restriction enzyme has the capacity to cleave that is 1000 base pair away. And this type 1 we also called as uh, multifunctional. Why? Because it has cleavage activity, it has binding activity, as well as it has uh, methylation activity. That's why this type 1 restriction endonuclease we called as a multifunctional enzyme. Okay. So which will possess both restriction and also methylase activity because of the presence of, you know, different subunits. It has uh, methylation activity and also binding activity as well as cleavage activity. That's why this type 1 restriction endonuclease we call as a multifunctional, you know, uh, enzyme. So example for this, uh, you know, type 1 restriction endonuclease, so that is ECOB. Okay. okay, so ECOB, ECO, K are the examples for this 
type one restriction endonucleases. Okay, so uh, next come to the type two restriction endonucleases. So this type two restriction endonuclease has only one cofactor that is magnesium. Okay, so type two restriction endonuclease has only one cofactor that is magnesium, which will cleave within or at short specific distances from the recognition site. That is around uh, four to eight base pair away. Within a short distance, for example, here, uh, this is a DNA strand, DNA strand. Okay, so here, uh, uh, let me take another color. Okay, so here, this is a recognition site. Okay, so this type 1 uh, restriction endonuclease has the capacity for to recognize 1000 base pair away. Okay, some, somehow far. So this type 2 restriction endonucleases will recognize in the very short specific sequences. In a 4 to 8 base, base pairs away only this will recognize. Okay, that is the difference between type 1 and type 2. So here example uh, for this type 1, type 2 restriction endonuclease that is eco R1 and also BAM H1. Okay, so next uh, restriction endonuclease that is type 3. So this type 3 restriction endonucleases as two cofactors that is magnesium and also ATP. The cofactors are very important. Okay. So this magnesium and ATP uh, cleave at a site of 25 to 27 base pair from the recognition site. So when compared to type, type 2, somehow it is far. So this type uh, 2 will recognize 4 to 8 base pair. But this can uh, have the capacity to cleave at the sites that is 25 to 27 base pair. So uh, here recognition site is there, right? So from this recognition site, it has the capacity to cleave the distance. That's what we're discussing. Okay. So uh, example for this type 3 restriction endonucleases, that is ECO P1 and also HINF3. Okay. So the last uh, restriction enzyme or restriction endonuclease that is type 4. So type 4 restriction endonuclease has only one cofactor that is magnesium. Okay. So this cleave close to or within the recognition sequences. Okay. So target modified DNA. So this type 4 is there, right? We can see this is a target modified DNA such as methylated, which will modify it. Okay and hydroxymethylated and uh, glucosyl hydroxymethylated DNA. So only modified DNA will target and uh, cleave. Okay. So example for this type 4 restriction endonuclease that is MCRCB. So the type 2 restriction enzymes are most extensively used for the gene analysis and cloning work. So when compared to these four different types of uh, restriction endonucleases, this type 2 restriction enzyme is there, right? This one. This type two, this type two restriction enzo endonucleases are widely used. Okay, and are classified again. These type two restriction enzymes are subclassified into many types like uh, type two S, type two E, and also type two F. Based on the function, it will classify. So mainly four different types are there. So in that four different types, this type two is most extensively used for this gene analysis and also cloning work. So we are just focus on the cofactors and also uh, in how base uh, base pair away it will cleave from the recognition site. Okay, when come to type two, it is very close, and also when come to this, uh, you know, type three, that is twenty five to twenty seven base pair. This is thousand base pair away. Okay, so everything is important, and this type four is just for the modified DNA. Okay, so now um, move to the next slide. You can see the examples of different restriction enzymes. Eco R1, the organism source is Escherichia coli. This is the recognition sequences. This is how it will cleave. Then that is TAC1, Thermus aquatis, aquaticus. That is uh, TAC polymerase enzyme. We heard about this TAC, uh, Thermus aquaticus, right? The same thing. So this is the recognition sequences. This blue color indicates the you know, cleavage site. So next is the HIN3, that is Haemophilus influenzae. That is restriction endonucleases. Okay. And uh, yeah, next is the BAM H1, that is Bacillus amylo liquefaceous. Next is Arthobacter luteus. These are all some examples for the restriction enzymes. Okay. So now the same thing 
but uh, when it comes to the type 4 these three are the most important type 1 type 2 and type 3 so here type 1 is asymmetrical because it does not create any symmetric uh, you know ends that is the same thing that is uh, more than 1000 base pair away so next type 2 is very close type 2 that is around 5 to 20 base pair away okay so and again this is about the cofactors so next Apart from the four uh, different restriction enzymes, three more terms are there when it comes to the restriction enzymes. That is isocesomers. Okay, once again. Yeah. Isocesomers and also neocesomers as well as isocardomers. So what is nothing but isocesomers? So usually these isocesomers are Enzymes that recognize the same target DNA sequences and cleave it in the same way. For example, here two DNA strands are there. Okay. So isocesomer is a restriction enzyme. Okay. So this isocesomer is there, right? So which will recognize here. Okay. So this is a recognition site. So this isocesomer will recognize this target. And also which will cleave in the same way. If it is recognized, this means only this, uh, you know, sequence will be uh, cleaved. So that type of enzymes are called as uh, isocesomers. Enzymes that recognize the same target DNA sequences and cleave it in the same way. There is no difference. Okay. So example for this isocesomers are SPH1 and also uh, BVU. One okay, you can see if it is recognized between uh, cytosine and gu guanine, only this site will be cleared. Okay, not from away from the four base pair, away from the thousand base pair. No, when it is recognized in this target, the same target only it will cleared. Okay, so next is the neocesomer enzyme that recognizes the same uh, target DNA sequences but cleave at different points. Okay, so here to uh, for example, DNA sequence is there. So if it is recognized some other, you know, region, but it is cleaved in some other different point. You can see here in example, example SMA1 and also XMA1. So how we can see this is a DNA sequences. Okay. So here, uh, restriction enzymes will recognize here between uh, cytosine and guanine. But here what happened? it will cleave between cytosine and cytosine. You can see the same sequence, but when it comes to the cleavage thing, it is different. It will cleave in a different point. That is what called as a neocesomers. Recognize the same target. You can see the same sequences, but when it comes to the cleavage thing, it will cleave at a different point. Okay. So next is the isocordomers, enzymes that produce the same nucleotide extinction, but have different recognition site. Okay. So example, BAM H1 and also SAW3 AI, you can see this is a DNA sequences, produce the same nucleotide extinction. Extinction means you can see extinction the same. But when come to the cleavage thing, it will cleave at a different recognition site. You can see it will recognize between G and G. But when uh, come to the cleavage thing, what happened? It will cleave some other, uh, you know, other uh, site that is what called as ISO. Codomers. These three things, these three terms are very, 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 very important. Just uh, go through the examples and also cleavage sites. Apart from that, about this restriction enzymes, uh, the types and also examples, the nomenclature, everything is important. Okay. So uh, I hope uh, about this restriction enzymes uh, topic is clear. If any doubts, let me know in the comment box. Okay. So like my video, uh, share and subscribe to my channel. Your one like will give motivation uh, to create more and more videos like this. So I hope uh, you're preparing for KSAT examination. Boost your preparation and all the very best. And thank you so much for watching.